The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Welcome Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Two Minutes on Oriental Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on um, YouTube and also watching, those watching on Oriental Intelligence as well. A lot to talk about this week, obviously. Um, new coach at Rochester Adams. We're going to break that down. Um, my thoughts on the Empire at Rochester Adams. We got, we're in the final week of the MHA season. Um, we got girls softball to talk about. We got some baseball to recap. Also, um, we got some golf to recap as well. Um, so we got a lot to look at this week here um, on the pod, um, considering everything that's gone on this past week. So... You know, let's go to our main story here. We're gonna go to, from we're gonna go to boys basketball first. Obviously, the big story here is out at Rochester Adams. Um, there is a new coach over there at Rochester Adams. Um, Isaiah Novak takes over the program. Um, takes over coach Jared Thomas, who is who is now at Avondale. Um, so when you look at this hire, people are gonna say, "Well, okay." Um, you know, Novak, of course, we know he's got a very very long background. I mean, like he, he was, um, coached 13 years of experience at the high school and the Juco level. Of course, he's a Bishop Bully alum, class of 2005. Um, but he coached at Madison Ice Lamp here for two years, um, going 20 and 23 in that stretch. Um, you know, there were 11 and 12 last season. Um, he does have a lot of, um, of experience, especially in the Catholic League. He was an assistant under Ricky Palmer at Birmingham Borough of Rice. He also, he also um, coached at Birmingham at Bishop Foley from 2014 to 2016 when having a 21 and 24 record. Um, so when you look at, when you look at this hire, I mean, like when you look at Novak's um, pedigree, proven winner really is, even though the records don't show it. Um, but he's been he's been around close to 500, you know, in his previous two coaching stops. Um, so when you look at, you know, when you look at the hire, I mean, like, you know, it looks like this this looks like to be a home run hire. It looks like it. But when you look deep in the stats, you know, they're gonna say, I don't know. I mean, like, because you know, when you look at stats, stats do matter. I mean, like, when you look at Coaching hires the record, the, you know, but you got to look at, of course, he does have a very interesting, um, he does have a very interesting, um, you know, like, um, saying, if you do things right, good things happen, will happen. And that is true. You know, if you do things right, good things always happen. And, you know, and I think that will probably be the slogan for Rochester Adams this season is going to be that slogan. If you do things right, good things will happen. I mean, you work hard, you battle hard, good things happen. I mean, it's really shown. Um, now, when you look at when you look at the um, talent level, obviously Novak has done very well. You know, with um, you know, you know, with um, less talent. But you know, when you look at um, but you know. You know, when you look at the records, you know, you look at the records, obviously, you got to have what the players you have. So when you look at Adams, on the other hand, you look at the job Jared Thomas has built over there at Rochester Adams. I mean, like when he was there, um, he built that program from scratch. And you look at, of course, what he's done. Um, obviously, um, you know, winning two di- district championships in their first ever state regional championship, getting his first ever state quarterfinal last season, um, Novak's going to have a very interesting time. Now, what's going to help him is he has two very good players in Peter Karashis and um, William G coming back. Um, that will help um, Novak, especially in his first season. Um, when you have two proven guards who can take over games by themselves, um, really, you know what I mean? That's where, um, that's going to help him. I think, you know, I don't know where Brady Prescorn stands in all this, but it looks more and more likely he might not play basketball this year, considering, you know, he did get the commitment to Michigan um, and he might enroll early. So that's something to really, really watch for 
um, when you look at surrounding Prescorn. So he might not have the services of Brady Prescorn, but he does have William G. and Peter Kardashian, who's going to really help him in the guard situation there. Um, now, what also helps is Novak is going to be program strength. I mean, obviously, I mentioned earlier with Thomas what he did. Um, he built that program from scratch. And, you know, he left that program on very strong footing, very solid footing. I mean, obviously, when you look at Novak, he's going to have to really look at the um, middle school levels. And obviously what helps is you have West and you have Van Heusen. I mean, Van Heusen, obviously, because, you know, you look at Van Heusen, they're right next door to Rochester Adams. So that will help That will help the um, the process out when it comes to looking at middle school talent is, and I think that's where um, Novak needs to look at, obviously, you know, keep that pipeline flowing, you know, is because you look at that, um, because <laughs> you look at, when you look at programs, when you build programs, the strength of program always is built in the middle school levels. I mean, it is built in the, um, you know, that's where it is. I mean, elementary, middle school levels, you know, they're going through that pipeline and, you know, they're rising, you know what I mean? They're getting up there and, you know, getting up there, and then when you get the freshman basketball, JB basketball, and eventually varsity basketball, um, that's where the program built. I think that's going to be the challenge Novak faces is, you know, it's obviously going to be that building that program strength. That's the challenge I think he's going to face is looking at that um, area. But what helps him, what's going to help him next winter, obviously, is those two guards. Um Ben should be interesting to watch. Um, I'll be very curious to see his coaching staff. I mean, I've heard he's brought in two varsity assistants, um, two um, varsity, um, former varsity coaches to be his assistants. Um, I'm very curious to see where that's going to be with Adams. I mean, just curious to see how that's going to be, especially because now you're going to have to deal with the coaching transition, and that transition, unfortunately, has to happen during the season. I mean... It has to happen during the year. I'm also curious to see how Novak schedules because, you know, you look at obviously, you know, with Adams, I mean, is he going to play those top tier team, top tier not conference games? Um, is he going to play like, you know what I mean? You know, I'm very curious to see where he goes with the scheduling. I mean, really am. Um, and then the other challenge that I think is going to be really challenging for him is the division. I mean, you look at, of course, the leagues that he's been in. Yeah, he's been in the Catholic League. Um, In the Catholic League, I mean, he was a JV coach at Brother Rice under Ricky Palmer. So he knows the Catholic League Central. He's been in the MAC, the Macomb Area Conference. Um, I've kind of started to notice a trend a little bit with Rochester. Um, Obviously, you look at the MAC to the OA connection. You know, you look at, of course, Stony Creek. With Jeff Owen, um, he was at Warren Mott before he um, came to Stony Creek. Um, you look at Nicobola, he was at Warren Woods Tower. And then he, um, you know, another Mac school. And then you look at um, you look at now um, Isaiah Novak, who was at um, Mass Science Lampier Mac school to the OA. So I've noticed that trend a little bit, you know what I mean? Coaches from the Mac coming in the OA. Now, recently you had um, Steve Norgrove, um, who was at Stony Creek. Um, spent one year as an assistant under Bill Thurston coaching at Rochester for the girls program. Um, he went to Frazier and he's coaching the boys program at Frazier. So a lot of, a lot of moving around, especially with the OA and the Mac. Um, but back to, um, but back to, um, Novak here, the red is going to be interesting because Adams more than held their own in that division. Under Thomas, um, they played a really tough schedule. I mean, they played a really – the Red is a very difficult conference. When you look at the teams they got to play, you got to play the likes of North Farmington. You got to play Clarkston. You have to play – you got to play Oak Park. You have to play Ferndale. Ferndale is the defending Division Two state champions. Um, then you have to play West Bloomfield who I think is going to be very good next year. And then you have Groves. Of course, Groves is another team that has really made some headwaves. I mean, like, so when you really look at it, um, you know, so Adams will have a lot of challenges ahead of them. 
And I think, obviously, when you look at... I will be very curious to see how Novak adjusts in this. Because the Red, being in the Catholic League, being in the MAC, the MAC and the OA are two different conferences. They're really two different conferences. You know, you think about it, going from, like, the MAC... I think Lampier was in the MAC, I think, bronze. Um... To the OA Red. That's a, that's like a stratosphere. Considering where, you know, obviously, um, you know, where they've been at. Where Novak's been at. So, but, you know, you got to look at Novak's past. Obviously, last year, the Rams were 3-8. and eight, And they went on a, on a stretch where they went 8-4 eight and, um, eight and four in that final stretch. Um, to close out the to close out the season, and they ended up following the Birmingham Detroit Country Day um in the first round last season. But that tells you that Novak can turn a program around real quick. But I'm curious to see how he does with an established program. Really curious to see how he does with that, because Adams has already been an established program, and you know under Thomas, so. I think, honestly, you know, that's going to be his challenge. The player's challenge is going to be is, can they adjust to Novak's system? Can they adjust to it? How will the transition period go? And I mentioned this earlier. Unfortunately, it has to happen during the season. It doesn't happen during the summer league. It's got to happen during the, during the season. So, and now you open up the door, obviously, for district play. I mean, like, obviously, when you get in the postseason. You're likely either looking at Adams is in a really interesting spot because you look at Adams, obviously, you know, their rivalries with Stony Creek and Rochester. Um, I still think out of this whole thing here, I think Adams is still the best team in Rochester. Um, but when you look at the district, you know, do does the MHA decide to send them east again with Romeo Nidica Eisenhower? I mean, I think more and more likely that they're gonna send like Orion West. Um, or do they keep the district the same as it was the last two years? They could do it. But it would be very interesting to see how Novak does against the city rivals. Obviously, Rochester, um, and then Stony Creek, of course. Rochester, you know they got a star in Max, Max Mo coming up in the, in the system. He's only going to be a sophomore. Um, and then you look at Stony Creek. Stony Creek last year really struggled. It's, I think they really struggle with the coaching change. I mean, adjusting from Jeff o, from Steve Norgo to Jeff Owen, they really struggled. And could that be a concern? Is could Adams face a Stony like Stony Creek like issue? What happened to them last year when they struggled adjusting? When they struggled to adjust, it's possible. And. If you're going through that and you're in a division like where Adams in the red, that's not a good thing. So there are some dangers when you really look at, you know, when you look at this hire, um, when you look at the Novak hire. Can Novak, you know, adjust to life in the OA? And can he avoid a Stony Creek type situation? What happened? And, you know, I mean, like, he has good kids, obviously. He's going to have good kids. But that's the question I have coming into next year is, can Novak, you know, adjust to the OA? And can he adjust to playing life in the red? And can he also, and can he also avoid what happened to Stony Creek? Of course, Stony Creek last year, we know, had a veteran team. A veteran-proven team. And they struggled with Justin Jeff Owen's system. They really did. And they did get better late in the year. They did get better late in the year. Uh, but it was a struggle. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Last year, I thought Stony Creek would have won the, would have won the, um, was one of my favorites in the blue last year. They were one of my favorites. But they struggled down the stretch. Could it be an, could it be a situation like that at Adams? That is to remain to be seen. 
But when you look at Adams' program strength, it's solid. When you look at when you look at Stony Creek's program strength, it's solid. Um so when I look at the Novak hire, you know, when I look at the Novak hire, it's gonna be a good hire. But I'm curious to see how the wins and losses go. Um the division I'm a very concerned about with with Adams. I'm very worried about the division. Um, considering you look at how the division is, when you look at the teams that are in there, you look at proven programs like North Farmington, Clarkston, Ferndale. Um, then you have Oak Park in there. Then you have West Bloomfield and Groves. That's not an easy division. Really, it's not. And then, obviously, you know, you got to look at, of course, okay, how is the transition going to be? You know, if this is a smooth transition, I think Adams will be fine. But if it's a transition like what happened at Stony, that could be a problem. So, a lot of questions when you look at the hire. When you, a lot of questions. Um, summer ball, it's not going to tell me a lot. It really won't tell me a lot how, um, how I, with Adams, I think what's going to tell me is, with Adams is going to be your first, your first two, three games. That's going to tell me, you know, to see if, you know, how this is going to work. Now, obviously, you're, there is a transition period. And that has to happen during the year. So that's the challenge I think Novak and the, and the players that Adams has going forward. Do they, if they, if they can um, have a very smooth transition, then I think Adams can be a very good team. But, they do lose, but obviously a program strength. I'm very curious to see how he handles the middle school levels, particularly at Van Heusen and West. Um, now, some of those kids at West, they will go to, um, they will go to Rochester. Some will go there. Um, others will go to Adams. So, depends on the, depends on the location. Um, depends on the residence. Um, but you're going to get a lot of those kids that go to Van Heusen and go to Adams. Um, because it's right next door. So there's really two, um, so I'm curious to see how, um, how this is going to work. I mean, like, you know, I know there's a lot of excitement over at Adams about the hire. There's a lot of excitement. Um, you know, and then of course here in the, um, here in the news, but I will be curious to see how he handles this. Does he handle it well? I mean, the, I mean, does Novak handle it well? I think the challenge for Adams this year is going to be this. And I know I think I might get a lot of backlash about this. But for Adams this year, it's going to be as how do they handle the transition period? And they got to handle it. They got to handle it during the season. How, how does Novak handle the players? How do the players respond to Novak? If, they, if it responds smoothly, there's no doubt I think Adams is going to be a, could be a contender. In this division. It could be. But if they have like a Stony Creek-like situation. You know. Where they get out to a rough start. Um, really tough to overcome. I mean. Then it could be a really long year. So there's a lot of. You know. When it comes to change. It's not easy accepting change. It really isn't. And I think that's going to be the challenge for. Adams going forward is. How does this team, how does this program adapt to change? Knowing, you know, you know that um, Thomas is no longer there. And how do they adapt to a new system, new challenges ahead? You're still in the very, and also what doesn't help Adams is they're in a tough division. And, you know, when you look at the red, I mean, like, it's not going to be forgiving. Now, it could help you later in the year when you get in the postseason, but we're going to see. I mean, we're going to see how it works out. I mean, like, but it's, I'm curious to see how things work out over at Rochester Adams, especially with the um, Novak hire. Um, it looks like to what I've been hearing, it's off to a good start. Um, you know, everything's been going smooth over there, but I'm curious. But what I'm going to judge Adams is going to be basically like the first three games. Of the season. But I know that there has to be a coaching transition period. There has to be a transition period. Between the players and the coaches. And unfortunately for them. It has to happen during the year. You know. So. 
That's my take on Adams. That's my take on the Novak Kyer. Um, obviously, he he he's been around around basketball a lot. I mean, he's been around the game a lot. Coached at Madison Knights, Mitch Foley, and also at Madison Knights, Lampier. Watch the Adams, though. is a different animal. So, we'll see what happens. We shall see what happens with the um with the Highlanders. So, speaking of the Highlanders, um, they did take second in the um in the boys' golf state finals, fall in the Northville. Um, obviously, when you look at Rochester Adams, um, that class, the class of 2023, um, really special group. I mean, <laughs> really special group. I mean, look at the success they've had. I mean, and I'll probably make more of this next week. But just the success that that class of 2023 has had, obviously, when you look at the standings in golf, um, they had the rally. I mean, they didn't have a good first day. I mean, they really didn't. But they bounced back, and they made a lot of noise. I mean, they, they made a ton of noise. They they really showed... Um, they showed... Um, you know that they um that they could they could over that they played well. I mean they were second place behind Northville, um in the um in the final. They were they were right there. I mean, but you got to get credit where credit's due. Um, obviously you know Northville. Um, I mean Adams they trailed early, they trailed late, but they found a way. So. Give credit where credit's due. Um, give credit where credit's due. I mean, Northville, you know, they um, they won it. Um, but Adams had to rally late. I mean, Adams lost by two strokes. 607 was the score they had. Um, Lake Orion was 12th with um, 655. And Bloomfield Hills was also tied for 12th with 655 as well. They were both tied for, you know, 12th in the state. But Adams, they rallied. I mean, they they didn't have a good first day, but they came back, rallied, North Dakota to survive. So when you look at players that um, Peter Roney from Rochester Adams, he won the top ten individual award, shot a one forty. I mean, that says a lot there. Connor Fox Lake Orion was tied for eighth with one forty seven. Justin Oblett from Adams, he was tied for eighth, also with one forty seven. So, it came down to, it was tight between Adams, and it was really tight between Rochester Adams and, um, and, um, Northville. I mean, but, it, Rory comes back next year. So, Adams might be back in this conversation next year. They will be back. I mean, it's clear as day. They will be back. So, my take on this, you know, my take on the golf season, you know, I expect Adams to be a contender next year. I expect Lake Orion and Bloomby Hills to be back. I expect all those teams to be back next year. Let's see what happens. See what happens. Let's go to baseball. Um, some shockers. Um, during the um regional semifinals in the um, I mean Berkeley losing the Warren D. the Sal wasn't surprised there. Um, I really wasn't surprised in that score there. Um, I think the biggest upset for me had to be, um, I mean, Lake Orion, of course, knocking off Lakeland, um, kind of wasn't surprised there with the Dragons, how they, um, they won that one in the, um, regional semis, um, but I think the biggest upset to me had to be Troy Athens and Rochester Adams, um, Adams came in to the year, winning the red, um, a lot of confidence, he had Bo Pico brothers, Tate and Parker, um, obviously Parker is an Alabama commit for baseball, um, but, you know, the score read 4-3 Athens, so when I'm looking at the score, I'm going like, what? How is this possible? I mean, Troy Athens, they're in the white, I mean, they don't, you know, I know their enrollment's huge, but they don't usually play a lot of teams in the red, they don't usually they don't usually play, I mean, like, they'll play some teams in the red, but they don't play a lot. But then you go in and upset the um, red champion, that's a stunner. I mean, it really was. 
So I don't know if it was Adams that underestimated Troy Athens. I don't know if I don't know if it was the Highlanders who underestimated underestimated the Red Hawks. I don't know. But for Troy Athens, big credit to them. I mean, they had a um, you know, I mean, obviously I don't know what Adams was thinking, but they had a great game plan for Rochester Adams. They had a great game plan for them. So I was really surprised how that turned out. Just really surprised with how um, you know. You know, just, I couldn't believe it when I looked at the score and I'm saying, like, Athens 3, Athens 4, Adams 3. I'm going, like, what? I can't believe that. Because I thought Rochester Adams, they had everything lined up for them perfectly to maybe get to the semifinals. I mean, they had everything lined up perfectly. Um, Unfortunately, you know, it wasn't the case. So when you look at it here, really, um... You know, I, I, that, was a, that was one of my biggest upsets was, you know, you look at, of course, obviously what happened in the district round with the top three teams all knocked out. I mean, obviously, you know, sometimes when you look at these state tournaments, rankings don't matter. And it looks like they don't. Um, that's kind of like the same thing for softball. I mean, obviously, you look at, of course, the, um, I think the top three teams in softball are knocked out. But we'll talk softball in a minute, a couple minutes. Um, but. The Athens Adams game really describes, you know, baseball. It can be a real, it could baseball can be a real tough sport. You know, you look at it right now during the college baseball world series right now. You know, you look at a team like Oregon. Oregon lost to Oral Roberts in their home field in the Super Regionals. And you look at, and you look at it in college softball. You know, we had some upsets there in softball, in college softball. I mean. It can be a forgiving, unforgiving sport. It really can be. Um, but for Adams, you know, with all the expectations coming into the year, for them to fall to Athens, it was shocking. It was surprising and shocking all at the same time, you know, that I didn't expect Adams to get upset like that against a very good Troy Athens team. And you look at a team like Adams loses a lot next year. They lose a lot. So that's something to really watch for heading into next year is how will Adams respond next season? How is their program strength? Um, and then you get to the regional finals. Um, Lake Orion took on Macomb, Dakota. And Troy Athens took on Grand Blank. That was a good game between Troy Athens and Grand Blank. It was a really good game between those two teams. Um, I think it was 3-2 was the final score there in favor of Grand Blank. Um, but Troy Athens fought in that game. They kept it tight, kept it close. Um, you know, they had a chance to win it. Couldn't get it done against Bobcats. Um, but for Troy Athens, they had a great year. I mean, they had a good postseason run. Won at 1 a.m. Virtually OA District. Um, they beat their arch rival Troy 9-5 in the district semis. Destroyed Utica in the district final. And then stunning Adams. I think a lot of those kids are going to remember that for the rest of their lives is stunning Rochester Adams. I mean, nobody, nobody would have thought that they would have done that. And then they took Grand Blank. You know, they battled him. They battled, battled, battled against Grand Blank. Um, and then you look at Lake Orion, Lake Orion took on Macomb, Dakota. Um, and this is the baseball, um, in the baseball regional final and Lake Orion's consistency problems came back and, and hurt him. It came back and hurt him. I mean, Macomb, Dakota had a couple good innings. They ended up winning 5-1. Um... Now, you know, in baseball, you know, this is where, you know, the tough side of it gets to. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, you look at it on paper, you know, I look at it on paper, I thought Lake Orion was a better team. But, you know, you have your days, you have your good days, you have your bad days. You have your good days when you look at a team like Lake Orion who, um, you know, you know, Lake Orion on that day when they upset West Bloomington, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, I mean, 
Nobody in the right frame of mind would have thought the Dragons would have made it to the to, made it to this round. Nobody. I mean, especially when you look at the um, and then especially with how Lake Orion played later in the year when they really struggled consistently with consistency. But they picked it up at the right time, and look what happened. Made a regional final. There's a lot to be proud of for Lake Warren, though. A lot to be proud of for the Dragons. Um, so when you look at recapping the baseball season, um, I still think Lake Warren is going to be very good next year. I think the Dragons are going to be a tough team to watch. They're going to be a tough. They're going to be a tough out next year. Um, I think I think they're going to be one of the favorites in the red next year. I I, I think they will be. Um, but I'm very curious to see how the divisions play out, how things are going to work out. Um, just very curious to see how it goes next year. Really, really curious to see how it goes. Um, and then let's go to, um, you know, and then let's go to lacrosse. I mean, boys lacrosse, um, girls lacrosse, of course, and Bloopy Hills ran to Brighton. Um, you knew it was going to be a tall order for them. Um, taking on Brighton, of course, Brighton ended up winning that game. Um, moving on to the, uh, and they end up winning the state championship and, um, girls lacrosse. Um, they end up winning that one. Um, and then you look at on the boys' side, Clarkston and Brother Ice in the, um, Brian Brother Ice in the, um, in the, um, sem in the quarterfinals. I just couldn't believe that Birmingham Brother Ice would do that to Clarkson. They just, destroyed them. It wasn't close. It was not even close. I mean, three minutes in, you're down five, four nothing. Three minutes in. I mean, there's no words to explain that against Birmingham Brothers. There's really no words to explain that. Just, it was just mind-boggling to see what happened. In that game. Just mind boggling. I mean, how in the world would how in the world would um you know, you think about it, you know, you know, what Clarkson did against Lake Orion in the regional fine in the um in the quarterfinals, I am I messed up my um my um rounds in the playoffs. It was the state semifinals, so apologies to um Clarkson there. They made the state semifinals. But still how, it's hard to explain. You feel numb when you have that happen to you. You just, you feel numb. You know, yeah, you're playing against a proven Catholic League power in Birmingham Brother Rice, you know, but still. And Birmingham Brother Rice is a team that's motiv was motivated after what happened to them last year when they fell to Heartland. So, you know, you kind of feel numb if you're Clarkson, you, you, you feel real numb. I mean, to see that happen to you, you know, to see the ball go in your net, you know, at least once, twice, maybe 10 times, 15 times, it, it makes you feel numb. And there's nothing you can do on the other side. That's how dominant they were. That was how dominant... That Birmingham Brother Rice was against Clarkston. I mean, they had a performance that would make you feel numb. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can say about it. Just gotta move on. Just gotta move on from it. You know? For Clarkston, they had a great year. Really good year. Next year, I expect Clarkson and Lake Ori to be the two of the top teams again in boys lacrosse. I mean, both teams got a lot coming back. I mean, I expect both those two teams to be back. But who knows? Were they put them in the same district? Were they put them in the different regionals? Maybe meet deep in the playoffs. Who knows? <clears throat> That's something to really watch for. I mean, that's something to really watch for. So we'll see what happens. See what happens. Okay, now let's go to girls soccer. Um, we still got an OA team still playing Stony Creek. Um, now, when you look at this regional, obviously it was at Rochester. Um, I was stunned Troy Athens fell in the new Baltimore Anchor Bay. I was just absolutely stunned. Um, 
how that game went. Um, four three and penalties. I mean, that was nuts. But it was rare to see Troy Athens blow a two nothing lead, and they did that against New Ball Boarding Command. They did that against the Tars. Um, but credit where credit's due to New Ball Boarding Command. I mean, they played well. They played well in that game. They played really, really well. Um, got the game to penalties and scored and scored time and goals and they need them. They even took a 3-2 lead on Athens at one point. Had to make Athens respond, tie it up. And they went to penalties. And New Ball Boy Anchor Bay took advantage and upset Troy Athens. They took advantage. So it was stunning. Real, real stunning to say the least. Really, really stunning. Um, but credit where credit's due. Um, Stony Creek took on Bloompia Hills. Um, of course, Bloompia Hills defending Division One state champions after what happened last season. Stony Creek, obviously, um, coming off winning that group of death district. Um, you know, when you have that loaded district, when you look at teams like Adams in there, Rochester was the top-ranked team in the state in there. Yet Lake Orion was in there. Utica Eisenhower and Utica were all in there. I mean, just insane how I don't think the MHA will ever pair up that district ever again. I'd be shocked they do. I mean, they did release the boys' soccer districts. They did release those. Um, but some of them I really like. I mean, like, something really... There's some interesting storylines there in the boys' soccer districts. Well, I'll post that in the blog um, sometime during the... Um, during the month, I mean, during the month of June, I mean, I will post those districts. Um, so when you really look at it, um, you know, Stony Creek, obviously, they, I mean, like, obviously, riding a lot of confidence. Let's not forget Stony Creek is ranked third in the state. Let's not forget that. I mean, you know, the the group of that district they had to go through was, it was brutal. It really was brutal. I mean, they knocked off Rochester, obviously, 3-1 um, in the district final. Um, you know, obviously, they talked about revenge in that one, obviously. And they got it. That was for sure. Taking on Bloopy Hills, it was going to be a low-scoring game, defensive game, and it proved to be that way. Um, Stony Creek got a goal late, got a goal on the, um, during the game. Won that one one nil. They won it one nil. Um, they did just enough defensively. I thought Merrick Schlaubach played very really well in goal. She played well for Stony in goal. I mean, you know, obviously you look at a course with Stone with um, you know, you look at with girls soccer. I mean, girls basketball has a lot to do with it too. You look at players like in Rochester. You look at Alice Max, in Natalie Race. You look at um, you know. You look at, of course, um, Ava Williams played off play girls basketball. You look at Merritt Schlaubach plays girls basketball. You look at Solik. She plays girls basketball. I mean, you know, I mean, like, that tells you the connection between girls basketball and girls soccer. Multi-sport athletes. I mean, that's the beauty of this. You know what I mean? Beauty of it. But when you look at Sony Creek winning that game, I mean, I think I think home field mattered a lot in that one. Of course, being really close by to Stony, being close close by, um, I think that that said a lot. Um, and then of course you look at the region of the regional final between Stony Creek and New Ball and Rankin Bay. That game was tight. That game was tight. Stony Creek found a way to win that one two one. I mean, they got a goal late. Um. In the first overtime session, they got the goal. And they had to they had to um play very well defensively to survive. And they won a regional title. So now Stony Creek's in a very interesting situation now. So they're really close to winning their first ever um state title since twenty eighteen. Actually twenty sixteen. And they got a chance. They got a great chance. They're going to be at home. They're going to take on a very good Celine team. Um, Celine's coming in riding with a lot of confidence. Um, 
but the game's at Stony Creek. Now, I don't know how the MHA gave Stony Creek that home game, but it's a home game for Stony, nonetheless. It wouldn't surprise me if the whole community of Stony Creek is, shows up in that game. It would not surprise me. Because, you know, you know, you look at it here, Stony Creek's got a great chance to win it all. They got a great chance. Now, on the other side of things, you got Grand, you got you got Hudsonville taking on um, taking on Northville. Northville's the top team in the state, and those two teams are going to battle at Grand Ledge. I think Northville knocks off Hudsonville. If if I had to do my projections right now, who I think would win? I think we're seeing a Northville Stony Creek um, state final. That's just my opinion. Because I like, you know, I think it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. <laughs> but obviously, you look at a team like Northville, we know how good they are. We know how good they are. They've been dominant. But they've had to survive some games. I mean, Wall Lake Northern, they had some problems in that game with them. But Northville's a very good team. But with Celine, it's going to be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see how, how that, um, how that matchup goes, especially for Celine having to travel. Basically, it's a virtual road game for them. It is a road game for them. So that's going to be very interesting to watch. So that's something to really, really watch for is how will Celine respond to being virtually on the road? <laughs> and they are on the road. So, but I don't know how teams are going to be wearing. You know what I mean? If Stony Creek's going to be either wearing blue or going to be wearing white. I mean, by the looks of it, it looks like Stony Creek's going to be wearing white virtually on their home field. You know, which is fine because, you know, you look at basketball, you know, we're white at home anyway. I wonder if Stony Creek's got a gold. I wonder if they wear gold. I mean, like, that would be something. You know, that would be really something. But I'm curious to see how, how that, but when you look at the game, I think it would be interesting to see. If it goes, if it's a defensive slugfest, I would take Stony. But I don't know if Celine's played a team as tough as Stony. I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see. It'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Um. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. Um. Let's go to softball now. Um. Obviously, when you look at softball, um. You know, in the regionals, they had the regional rounds. Um. There were three oh eight teams that were there. Royal Oak, Bloomfield Hills, you had Oxford, and Lake Orion, where the team in Stony Creek, all five, they had 508 teams um, that were there. Three of them were in the same region. Um, Royal Oak, you know, they took on um, Livonia Churchill. Um, that ended up being nine to four. I mean, in favor of the um, Chargers over the Ravens. Um, you kind of knew. You know, Royal Oak winning a district title. You you had to wonder how they how they would respond against Livonia Churchill. I mean, yes, Livonia Churchill's played a tougher schedule than Royal Oak. Um, but Royal Oak put up some runs. They did put up some they did they did score some runs. Um so for Royal Oak, you know, they had a good year. They had a great year, a district championship. Um you know, they knocked off their arch rival Berkeley um, in the district final. Um, had a chance to host the regional. Have a home game on your home field in the regional. Um, but give credit where credit's due. I mean, you know, they had a good year. They had a really nice year. And that they did. Um, but what ha ended up happening was Churchill um, went and fell to Growth Point North. Um, in the um, regional final, so Gross Point North is in the um, state quarterfinal, which is all taking place Tuesday at different sites. Um, then you have the state semifinals and the state finals, of course, taking place um, this weekend over at Michigan State. Um, so, but when you look at it here for Royal Oak, it was just an incredible year for them. Been a nice year. I mean, winning a district title, that says a lot. Really does. Um, but credit where credit's due, though. I mean, really, credit where credit's due, though. Um, Bluebeer Hills 
in their district over at um Troy Athens in the region over at Troy Athens, um taking on Utica Ford. Um, how do I explain this? How do I explain this? I, I've just, I've been saying this for about a couple weeks now on the podcast. Is Bloomby Hills can score a ton of runs, but man, they give up a lot of runs. And if they run into a very good pitcher, then that could lead to trouble. And it looked like it did. And Utica Ford mercyed Bloomby Hills 20 to 4. So I'm looking at the score. And I'm saying to myself, what happened? What happened to Bloomby Hills? What happened? I mean, you were coming in averaging almost at least 10 runs a game. And you only scored four? But some tells me that Utica Ford must have figured something out. Or the or Utica Ford's pitching shut down Blue Bay Hills. Or Blue Bay Hills' defense really failed them in that game. I mean, it must have if you given up 20 runs. But still, you know, 20 runs allowed in a game like that in a regional semifinal, that's not good. That is not good. And I'm at a loss for words here explaining this. Is how do you explain it? You can't. You really can't. I mean, Boomby Hills, they use their offensive firepower in the districts. But Utica Ford, you know, they came off a district where they had to survive where they had to virtually survive against, um, you know, Utica in the district final. And they had to survive Troy, I mean, like, who knocked out Troy Athens. So, for Bloomfield Hills, I'm just at a loss for words explaining the Blackhawks. Really am. But it looked like they ran into a good pitcher, and yet their defense failed them. So that's really what the difference was. So, I know Ford's a good team, but... Still, I mean, like, give up 20 runs like that. It's insane. It really is. Um, Utica Ford ended up winning their um their um regional and now gonna be in the regional gonna be in the state quarterfinal against the um against the winner of the Oxford regional. Um which took place at Oxford with three oh eight teams were in there. Namely Oxford, Lake Orion, and Stony Creek. Stony Creek took, Lake Orion had no issue with them, Oxford. 16 nothing in three innings. I mean, Lake Orion was just dominant against Oxford. Really was. Um, You know, it just wasn't there. It wasn't Oxford's day. It really wasn't. But it tells you how good Lake Orion was. They could hit. They could really, they, and, they, and they proved that game. They can hit. They did that. They were dominant. They were really dominant. Then they had that long wait where Stony Creek took on Macomb, Dakota. Macomb, Dakota came in top-ranked team state. Stony was a team ranked in the state as well. It being a heck of a pitcher's duel. Um, Aaron Flynn had a nice game for Stony. I think Macomb, Dakota's pitcher had a, almost had a perfect game. One hit the Cougars. It was one nothing with that score. I mean, just absolutely insane. Just insane. I mean, what a pitcher's duel there in that game. For Stony Creek, one of the best um, seasons in sport in school history. That says something right there. Give credit where credit's due. And Stony Creek's going to be good again next year. I think they're going to be very good. But, you know, taking the top-ranked team in the state, had a pitcher's duel, um, just, just explain it. Just explain it. How do you explain it? Give credit where credit's due, though. I mean, Stony Creek had a nice nice year. Really nice year. Also, Oxford had a nice year as well. I mean, Oxford had a good year as well. They won a district title. Um, knocked off Davison. Knocked off Lapeer. Um, you know, just really... And then knocked off Port Huron. 
in the district. So credit where credit's due. Then you had the regional final between Lake Orion and um, Macomb, Dakota. Macomb, Dakota was leading one up. I mean, they had a sack fly. Um, but then, and then I think James Luby hit a two-run shot. Gave the Dragons a two-one lead. And then they relied on their defense. Their defense was absolutely insane in that game. They made diving catches. Um, got out of a bases loaded jam. Um, especially that fifth inning. Um, and then they had a um a diving catch by Ellie Britt to close it out. It says a lot. I mean, for Lake Orient, it's their first um, regional title, I think, since 2016, I think. Got to go back in my history archives. Um, but Lake Orient's a young team, too. A very young team. And they're getting a lot of experience being in this round. Really are. They knocked off some good teams, too. Really good teams. I mean, let's not forget, you know, you're playing in one of the toughest divisions in the state in the red. You've knocked off, you knocked off Corkston in the district final. You knocked off Oxford, your arch rival. And now you knock off the top team in the state, Macomb, Dakota. Lake Orion Spring Sports, you look at baseball and softball, they've had a habit of knocking off top ranked teams in the state. Look at baseball, they knocked off Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Now you knock off Macomb, Dakota in softball. So that kind of tells you something right there. Um, but credit where credit's to your coach Joe right here and his team. I mean, they um taking home a regional title, and now it sets up the state quarterfinal matchup on Tuesday afternoon between Lake Orion and Utica Ford. I think this is going to be an interesting matchup because I don't think the Utica Ford has seen a team like Lake Orion. I mean, I'm not sure they played Macomb Dakota yet this year. I'm not sure they played them, um, but I'll tell you what I think. I think Lake Orion's a different animal than what Utica Ford has been seeing recently. I mean, they played Troy at, I mean, like, they played, um, I mean, they played in the MAC. But I'm telling you, I think Lake Orion's a different animal. So it'll be very interesting to see how, um, how these two teams match up, especially if, if Lake Orion, if Utica Ford wants to get into a hitting match with Lake Orion, that's fine. Lake Orion can hit. They want to get into a pitching match, up, fine. Lake Orion can pitch. They can also play defense, too. I mean, it could be. If it's a pitcher's duel, I would take Lake Orion. If it's a hitting duel, yes, Utica Ford put up 20 runs against um, put up 20 runs against Utica against um, Bloopy Hills, but I still take Lake Orion. So I look like Orion that game against Utica Ford. I really do. It'd be interesting to see what happens in that matchup though. Whoever wins that one's either going to take on Gross Point South or Gross Point North or Heartland. Don't get me wrong, I, I, it's going to most likely be Heartland. Look at what Heartland did. I mean, Heartland went into one of the toughest regions in the state and won that regional. They knocked off South Lion, albeit South Lion didn't have Ava Bradshaw. Um, but then they knocked, they played Farm Tales Mercy, who had one of the best sophomore pitchers in the state, I think, Kate Paluzzi. Um, and they put three runs on her. And yet she didn't allow an utter, she didn't allow an earned run this season at all. That's insane right there. And they won that one three nothing over Farmdale's Mercy. And Farmdale's Mercy is a relatively young team, and they got a lot coming back next year. So when you look at Heartland, Heartland, they're dangerous. They're a dangerous team. And could you just imagine a state semifinal between Lake Orion and Heartland? That would be insane. It'd be a heck of a matchup. Because both these two teams would beat you in any in different ways. They could do it. But that would be a crazy matchup if that were happen. And then you have the state final coming up, you know, on that Saturday. Which is the final day of the high school sports season. So when you really look at it, could you just imagine yourself, and I'm saying this many times here, if Lake Orion, you know, can knock off Utica Ford, 
at Troy Athens. Of course, Troy Athens has not been kind of Lake Orion in the past. I mean, this spring, look at lacrosse for a perfect example there when they play Clarkston. Um, but I think the Dragons have a chance here to do some damage. I think they got a shot to be in the Final Four. They got more than a shot, I think, to be in the Final Four. Can you just imagine Lake Orion and Heartland that I mentioned earlier? That's going to be really tight. That will be a close game. I mean, both teams got experience. Both teams have depth. Both teams are solid defensively. I mean, I'm telling you. That would be an interesting matchup if that happened. Um, And that could happen. And the other side... I haven't looked at the other side of the softball draw yet. I haven't actually Grand Blank's in there. Grand Blank, they can't, they won a regional title. I gotta figure out Grand Grand Blank's plan. I think it's the Witter plan, but I'm not sure. Um, but I, I think when you look at that region, when you look at the softball. Um, when you look at the quarters, I'm telling you, I think Lake Orion's got a great chance to do well. They got a great chance. Um. They got a great chance to do very well. And I think they got a they got a good shot here, I think, to win a state title. I think they got a good shot. Actually, I got it now. Um, I got the brackets here. Um, Grand Blank's playing Jenison. And that's going to be over at CMU. Woodhaven's taking on Canton. Canton, we know, has been very good all year long. Heartland playing Growth Point North Dimension. And Utica Ford taking on Lake Ori. Um, I, I think it'll be really interesting. To see it, but I think you know. But if if it would be an interesting matchup, if Lake Orion played Genesis. I know if Lake Orion played um Heartland in the semifinals. Um, I think that would be insane. Now, obviously, you know I don't know who's going to represent the other side of that bracket, but we'll see. But that's why they play the game. That's why they play the game. Somebody always tell me that's why you play the game. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, you know, you got, um, so a lot to look at as we had in the final week of the year. Um, you know, we looked at all the, um, sports, uh, most sports. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, uh, make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information especially with North Farmington's girls basketball coaching search. Um, also, you know, also follow the blog as well around the OA. Of course, it's my blog as well. So um, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, I'm signing off here. Um, take care. God bless. Wish everybody the best of luck, especially Stony Creek um, girls soccer and Lake Orion softball in their respective, um, you know, in their respective um, state semifinal and also state quarterfinals. Um, so we'll recap both those teams next week and how they did. So we'll see what happens. We'll also introduce our um, first ever football um, football coaches um, talk to, and we'll talk to we'll talk to some football coaches around the area to talk about how their teams have been doing this this summer, um, especially what they what they're looking forward to heading into the fall football season. So I'm gonna sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care, and I will see you next week. God bless all. God bless everybody.